So hello, everybody. My name is Becky Auer, and welcome to our free Wednesday webinar training. I am excited that you guys are here. We have a great subject today, and I'm going to just jump right in. And if you have a question, please drop it into the chat box. That is below. And um, as we go through, I will try and answer your uh, questions um, probably at the end. So if you have a question about anything I'm saying, uh, drop it in the chat, and then at the end, I'll review the chat questions and and um, we'll go from there. So I'm going to go ahead and get started. All right. So we're going to start from the beginning. Move you out the way here. Okay, so A, thank you for being here. I truly, truly appreciate it. And I really am uh, going to talk today a lot about learn how to optimize your office for success. So as you might be able to tell if you've been on calls before, this is not my normal um, office. I uh, am living the, lap the laptop lifestyle, if you will. I'm actually visiting friends here in Lima, Ohio, and I'm in her office. And she's like, you could use my office for like, what a disaster it is. <laughs> and I'm like, no, because <laughs> she's all decorated up over here and has stuff everywhere. And I'm like, look, as long as it's efficient for you. So what I want to teach you today is, you know, how to make it, uh, how to make your office efficient for you. So my overall goal every single week week is to provide you with content that is right to the point. There's no fluff. There's no huff. It really just helps you get better at whatever it is we're talking about this week. So it's optimizing office for success this week. And I'm going to share with you some tips and tricks uh, that I use and that um, you guys could probably chime in and share some of the things that you use. Um, and let's get everybody ready for a great uh, organized office and one where you can find things and all your files aren't lost and things like that. So a lot of times on these um, Wednesday webinars, I will ask you to step outside of your comfort zone and because that is really where the magic happens. So everybody's always a little bit nervous about that and I totally get it. Uh, but when you do that, when you do step outside of your comfort zone, it really starts to like most people are, are afraid right or fearful of doing something that's going to make them look stupid or you know something like that but once you do that and once you uh, jump outside of your comfort zone you will see the magic happen a little quicker I also know that being an entrepreneur is lonely. There's not a whole lot of places that you can go and get support and to and get some, um, you know, people that are thankful uh, and, and ready to help you or support you or whatever. When I started in as a serial entrepreneur years and years ago, they didn't even have social media yet. So you either had to go to a local meeting where that happened, um, but this is your safe place. I like to call it the safe place of, you know, you being here and uh, to jump in, ask questions. You have a safe group here. And so I like to say that because I know how lonely it can be when your spouse doesn't support you and things like that. A lot of times your road to success, people think, oh, being an entrepreneur is easy and it's just going to be perfectly simple to just start and, you know, have no bumps in the road. And what it really looks like is there's a whole lot of twists and turns and so on. And so, you know, you know that you just, keep pushing and get trainings like this and that will help you. So who am I and why listen to me? My name is Becky Auer. For those of you that don't know me, I appreciate you being on the call. I am a three-time multi-million dollar business owner, uh, voted number 20 of top business coaches in the world, which was awesome. I've run over 300 um, seminars, workshops, um, meetings, uh, speaking engagements, um, local meetings here in Pittsburgh. Um, and I say all that not to brag about any of that, but just to say I've been where you are. Um, I feel as though I can help you with your um, journey, with your experiences, and I'm thrilled to be able to do that. Um, so I've gotten all sorts of awards, but the main thing I want you to know is that you aren't alone and I'm, there are people out there to help you and, uh, and I hope you resonate with that. All right, so let's just jump right into how to optimize your office for success. So when you organize your environment around you um, for productivity, you increase your ability to be able to work effectively. Um, so today, I'm going to try and give you some tips and tools to help you streamline your office, to get rid of clutter, maximize your workspace, to be more productive. And once you do all of that, you um, most of the time will um, 
it will save you a lot of money because you will know where everything is and you don't have to go out and repeat buy things and so on. So when you have a disorganized office, it just costs you more to run. If you don't know where a certain tool is or equipment or supplies and things like that, and you don't know where you stored that, um, you just have to then go out and replace it, right? There's nothing else that you can do. So you spend a lot of time looking for things if they're not organized and, and put places. And look, we've all been guilty of that. I certainly know that I have, but I've gotten better over the years. So there's been studies that have you know, revealed that the average business leader spends nearly four weeks each year. That amazed me looking through their messy and cluttered desks, looking for information that they know is on their computer, they don't know where to find it, um, looking in drawers that they thought, in fact, that happened on my way here to Ohio today. I wanted to bring some, one thing specifically, and I had to look in three drawers because it wasn't labeled properly, so I changed that. But does any of that sound like, <laughs> like, like you out there? I'm sure that it does. So today we're going to cover a lot of different things. Um, one is the psychological impact of walking in and having a clean and organized workspace. One is how to audit your work environment. Uh, another is the financial benefits of when you have an organized workspace. How you can implement the small changes that we talk about every single week. This one's just going to be in your office to make you more productive. And we're going to make sure that your office is equipped with the proper productivity tools. So if I haven't convinced you yet to look at these benefits, um, you know, you'll see as we go forward. First of all, it will give you better communication. An organized office environment definitely encourages better internal communication. So when you have a central area for staff communication, um, it's easier to share news, to make sure you're tracking your targets, and to planning your projects and things like that. Now, if you're a solo entrepreneur, this could be just to help you, but if you are a bigger business, it's to help you, the employees, everybody be on the same page. It also helps you have some type of manageable budget. So you know that your organized spaces will let you see what you currently have and what you might need more of. Um, and so it just helps support your whole um, office environment at that point. We also want to have increased work, work ethic and morale, right? So when you and the staff um, come in and have the things that they need, it definitely gives you a more pleasant um, workspace and environment. Uh, it also gives you better time management because it's less time looking for things and more time, um, you know, doing what you need to do to be productive. So let's get started by just walking through the step-by-step -step, um, audit that I have prepared for you. So we're going to literally walk through this, and I want you to take a notepad and give yourself a score um, as we go through these questions and that type of thing. And so it's supposed to be a positive exercise, so don't get overwhelmed because, again, little hinges swing big doors, so small changes are the best things to start with. So if your office is already pretty organized, go ahead and do the audit anyway because anything that might hit you um, like, oh, I don't do that, but that would help, that's what we want to get to. So this is where you're going to be most likely to um, really be productive is in your own office. So it's, it makes sense to start here first. So like if you have an office at work and then an office at home, start where, start where you want to be more productive, okay? And usually that's your own office, whether it is at work or at home. But let's go ahead and make some observation about how your office is right this second. And we're going to do that by asking the following questions. All right, what is currently on your desk? Is stuff everywhere or do you just have a clean workspace? Where are your current files located? And I mean hard, hard files, not files on your computer. Where are your old or inactive files? So like if you're a dentist's office or a construction company or somebody has to keep track of a whole bunch of employees, where do you store those files? How many personal items are visible? And then what is currently on your walls? Okay, so jot down a score uh, for all of those things. Then we're going to ask you, where are your office supplies? Are they somewhere in like one um, file cabinet? Are they on shelving? You know, where are they? How much paper is currently on your desk? So when I first started this whole thing, there was paper on my desk everywhere because I'm a visual, right? I like to be able to see my piles of things that I have to get done. And it just ended up to be a mess. Like I couldn't find anything. So I had to fix my own 
um, you know, my own mess. And so that's how I know a little bit about this. How many files, how many binders, how many books are on your desk? Oh, I have to get around to reading that book. And it's just like sitting, has been sitting on the corner of your desk for forever. Has that happened to anybody? <laughs> where is um, where is your in tray and your out tray located and how much is in there? Like, does it ever become clean or is it just there? So let's go ahead then and we'll identify some opportunities for improvement. So if you had, where would your office benefit from a better layout other than what you have right now? And it might just be pure chaos, right? It's just stuff everywhere. Um, but would your office benefit from a better layout? Would it benefit if you had a better filing system? How about a smaller desktop monitor possibly? Or a paper shredder right next to your desk so you can throw things in it as you go. So what I would suggest is to go ahead and clear your desk of everything except your computer, your calendar, your current files, your inbox, and your telephone. And sometimes people don't even have a telephone on their desk anymore. They just have their cell phone, but depends. Um, so go ahead and clear your desk of everything but those four things. And then depending on the size of your desk, you may want to have current files um, or your inbox in like the filing cabinet that's right at your desk. Anything that you don't use on a regular basis should be stored at arm's reach, not too far away so it makes you nervous, but not right on top of your desk. And now we want you to choose one central system for managing your notes, your to-do list, any tasks that you need to do, any type of brainstorming and scheduling, okay? Uh, if you have a day timer, like I'm old school, I still have a day timer, um, it's, I call it my black book. And so like sometimes when I'm looking to still write stuff in my day timer and the kids know it as my black book, I'm like, kids, okay, everybody stop. They know if I say everybody stop, I need the black book. They all have to stop what they're doing and help me locate it. It's never been lost, knock on wood. But if like I lost that black book, it would be like my life is gone. So I've gotten now to using my black book and putting it in my phone, you know, in my Microsoft calendar. So like everything is syncing, but I still rely on that day timer. So if you have a day timer, make sure to use it. If you have an electronic system, use it. And I say start to combine the two because I don't want to be in that situation. If the, if the day timer goes, then I'm totally like my life is done, right? Because I don't know any of my scheduled appointments. So I'm using both now. And you don't want to have too, too many binders or notepads or posty notes or, you know, I was good at one time and just making posty notes all over everything. And then I couldn't find anything um, because then it just gets all too confusing. So make a habit every day of cleaning up your desk at the beginning of the day and at the end of each day. And any papers that are loose or like have a to-do list or anything like that, I want you to be able to, um, to put them into organized folders, okay? And I'm going to tell you how I do that. And then you can either use that or use something that works better for you. Um, if you have drawer organizers to keep your stationary drawers clean and accessible, that works for me. So any of those loose papers, I just put them into file folders, you know, the hanging file folders. Um, and I categorize them with to do, to review, waiting on a response, on holder to file. And I'm gonna get more into detail on this. So I get asked all the time, well, how do you prioritize those files to be productive and to be able to take action quickly? So here's what I do. And I mentioned it last week um, towards the end of the call when we were talking about this upcoming week. I create 12 folders, one for each month of the year, and then an additional 31 subfolders, one for each day of the month. And then I add five folders to that. And those five folders are to do, to review, waiting on a response, on hold, and to file. So it ends up that I have 12 folders, 31 subfolders. So what is that? Uh, 40 three plus five, so 48 folders in one um, file cabinet. And then every day I fill each folder with the documents um, that I need to work on that day. So today is, what is today? Today is the fifth. And so I would pull out the number five folder, look in there, and those are the things that I need to work on uh, today, right? I open that up. I take all the files or all everything, all the loose paper and everything that's in that folder, and I move them into my today folder or up onto the top of my desk. And then I put the empty folder back in its slot. 
And anything I don't get done that day goes into number six, okay? So you just, I just transfer them on. So every single day when I come in to my office, I open up that folder, I know what I have to work on, okay? So it keeps track of everything that you need to do. Then with your, um, maybe I don't have to follow up with somebody until three months from now, I just make it a tickler folder. I put it into the three months from now folder. So it'd be December, so January, February. So in March, March 1st, I would have follow up with this person. Or if they wanted me to be on three months exact, I'd put it into, you know, March and then mark it as March 5th on the top to follow up with them, right? Because as you are the coach, as you are the person that is possibly trying to work with them, you have to be the one to be able to follow up and be organized. Um, and so this is the epitome, in my opinion, of a great paper system um, because everything's on my computer as well. But when I have that paper, I still like to have pencil and paper in hand. This works great for me. So here's, um, so as we go through your office area, um, let's make a list of areas that you can find in your business that may need um, additional help, right? So the top five areas in your business would be your office supply storage, you know, where are they and are they marked properly? Um, one is a team communication center. So if it's just you as a solopreneur, this may not um, apply to you, but somewhere you probably aren't doing all of this alone. So you have to have somewhere that the team can communicate. Um, a point of sale or reception area, maybe you're like a hairdresser or um, you know, an accountant or financial planner. So what does your reception area or point of sale area look like? Um, most people have a printer and photocopying area. And then if you have a staff room or a kitchen, those are the most common areas that people come to. Other areas of your business are your employees. If you have employees, they have offices of their own or your management has office. There's equipment storage, there's product stock storage, there's all the hallways in your office building. There might be a shipping and a receiving area. Uh, there might be financial paperwork and accounting that you have to turn over to the accounting department or your bookkeeper. And so as we move through each of these areas, we wanna ask these questions about those areas. So number one is what's the distance between your office and areas that you frequently use like the printer and photocopier? Because if you can be right next door or it's right on a shelf close to you because you do a lot of printing, that saves a lot of time, right? You can just grab them and file and use those prints. Um, how much loose paper is found around the business? Because loose paper, you know, one of those things could be really like maybe it's a contract that's signed that somebody didn't scan in yet, right? So you really have to um, either, you know, get those loose papers and scan them into your computer or file them or both, hopefully, um, into your area. What's hung up on the walls? Is there anything that's distracting uh, that could go? Um, what's your central communication point? Sometimes it's just the water cooler, right? Um, but what is your central communication point when maybe it's the reception area, things like that? How is your team communication center organized? Is it up to date? Do they have things that they need? And how much old stock are you storing? Because look, you don't need 200 reams of paper, right? You need 10. And when that goes down to maybe two, then you get another 10 and you restock like that. But you don't want to have a lot of your money tied up in inventory. How are your office supplies organized? Or are they organized at all? That could be a little problem if they aren't. Um, but you know, you might be at Sam's Club and you want to get, oh, I think we need tape. And you buy, you know, the 12 pack of tape and then you get back and there's, you know, <laughs> two other 12 packs of tape, right? So you want to make sure that they're organized, it's just like inventory, right? All that money that you're paying for that, it's like inventory. It's like inventory in a restaurant. You don't want to have too much and you can't have too little. So you want to have an inventory um, for your office supplies. Are, your, um, are the boxes on your shelves, are they labeled? Are they organized in a way that makes sense for you or your employees? Do your staff members have some type of organization system for their own desks? Because maybe tomorrow you might fire that guy and you need to be able to find contracts and things that are important um, and you don't want them to not be organized. So you have to keep an eye on your staff and organizing them. How many files are used on a daily or a weekly basis? Uh, you want to talk about that as you go through all this and where are your older updated files kept look I worked out of my basement for a long long time and we put all those files from this previous year you know we just put them in the back but they were accessible to us um, so where is that in your business
Okay, so now that we've kind of covered like where things are, we want to identify ways to be able to improve. So if you can label your boxes, your containers, your shelves, so everybody knows where everything is, that alone, and maybe it's not you, right, because you're the thinker, you're the creator, but a high school person or somebody that's really great at organizing could come in and do all of that for you. And you want to create a consistent filing system like the one that I mentioned. Um, you can also have an area where you provide shelving and filing in your cabinets or in your file cabinets. So it's all uh, fashioned or, you know, a system um, that works for you. You want to make sure that your system files um, are out of the way and out of sight. Like, look, if you're in a, some kind of health, you know, field, uh, all those HIPAA requirements and everything like that. So you have to make sure that they're out of sight, but that they are easily accessible and easily maintained. Any old unused stock stuff that is just like overrunning your office, you can either return it or you can sell it. And I would say get down and just create an inventory sheet. So anytime somebody comes, and takes that tape, you know, they mark that they took one tape and there should be three left. So you're creating an inventory system, but you know, you can just take that sheet when you're going to Sam's Club or wherever for your supplies that you need to restock those things. Okay, so you can locate other unused items, you can donate them, you can create additional space um, for things like that. Now, with you, if you have employees, you want to make sure each employee has access to the organizational materials they need to keep their office neat and productive. So that might be you supplying the, you know, the folder uh, hickeys that the manila folders go into, or giving them stacking trays and helping them, you know, create a system uh, or show them a system that you've worked on to create that helps you. Because a lot of people don't know how to organize. And then again, minimize the distance between your office and the areas that you use most frequently um, because that will help you. Finally, you want to make sure your business has the tools you need to run an effective operation because there's no sense being in business if it's not effective and if, and if it's not operating at maximum capacity. So a couple things, like if you have trainings and so on, a team communication center for your team, members, for your team members to review on a daily basis for important information, like maybe there's sales updates or there's company news that you wanna display somewhere. Sometimes a whiteboard, just so you can, if there's a, a day shift and a night shift, things like that, you wanna be able to communicate, just a quick whiteboard note or two, you can do something like that. Or if you have a year plan, like a big calendar on a whiteboard, you can put launch dates and you know planning dates and marketing uh, dates and things like that. But you have to have some way to be able to communicate and a whiteboard works, um, works great. So if you have like that sales board um, in your team communication center or a private location that clients can't see, you want to customize that for your business, right? So I use the thin black tape and I create columns and rows so you can chart things that you want to keep track of, either on a weekly basis or a monthly basis. And then you'll be able to compare this week from last year to this week this year. And I always keep track of the weather for whatever reason, it was something that I started. So I can see a week ago, like when I had my restaurant where we did six and a half million dollars every year, every week I would track our sales and I would put down what the weather was like because if it was snowy, maybe we weren't as busy um, than if it was you know, just clear outside and no problems with the driving um, in the Pittsburgh area, right? Um, so you wanna be able to be able to chart weekly or monthly and compare that compare it to weekly, quarterly, or yearly targets from the previous year, and then be able to project going forward. I also use a 12-month marketing planner, um, so you have your eyes you know, on the big picture, not just like what's gonna happen today. I love scheduling campaigns, promotions, um, and I do that all around weird, wacky holidays, and it's one of my favorite things to do. But if you use the dry erase board, like the whiteboard that we were talking about, you can easily make changes to that. Um, but usually once I have things set up, I don't really make that many changes. It's just things that I add to it, um, or I can color code it for things that need done, like red would be things that need done um, you know, a month or two before the promotion because it has to get printed or copied or something like that, okay? So a couple additional tips to creating a system. You can create a filing system and then color code it. So for example, 
all your group vendor files or accounts payable, you assign one color. And then all your client files would be a different color. And then any projects or product files would be a third color. Okay, so there's a whole, you can do a whole color system, which I love, again, because I'm visual. Then you can also sort each filing category by date or alphabetically by name. So vendor and supplier files by name, client files by client number or name, and then project files by a project number or by name, which whatever works for you. All your tax stuff should be together. I throw everything into a receipts folder, donation folder, and then an other folder for tax related information, all in the same drawer in the same filing cabinet. And then if I need to make a copy uh, or something, I just put that in there and put a note on it because then at the end of the year, I can go in to see my accountant, say here is what I have. Um, and ha if there's any questions, I have notes written over it. So that's how I do my tax stuff. And then I have a master binder for lists of office passwords, financial um, accounts, goals, birthdays, contact information for vendors. Um, I have everything right there in case, God forbid, knock on wood, I go out, get run over by a Mack truck. You know, at least there's something there that people can go in and access important information to keep things running, okay? So if you don't have that, that master list, I would say definitely make a master list. Other things, I learned this from George Ross, um, who, when he was um, on uh, The Apprentice with Donald Trump, somebody asked him like how, or he was actually at a conference where he, where I heard him speak, and they somebody asked him a question, "How do you keep so organized?" And he said, "I use one spiral-bound notebook for everything, for any phone call that comes in, for any person I talk to. He just writes it all in one notebook. And he said, by now I have about 40 different notebooks, but he just, everything that he does, every call that comes in, every person he talks to, anything he calls to inquire about, he just lists in that notebook. So it's all in one place, which I love. Um, and then he makes notes next to it. So he could go back and say, oh, I remember I talked to that person about a year ago and he can just go back. He dates everything for when he talks to the people and he can go back and it's in his notebook. So I love, love, love that idea and I use it all the time. Um, you can also create a business card management system. A lot of times now there's like card bunch where you can take a picture of the credit card or the business card and like a live person enters that information into your contact management service um, but anything that's look it's laying around maybe you got it a year ago just throw away the old business cards I say don't keep them you don't know those people you haven't had a relationship with them just start over um, those that you go through and that you know you can organize the cards by the last name or you can put them into your computer um, your CRM program or your Microsoft Outlook or Google or whatever you keep um, and then you have to get that information um, out of your email into a data management program Look, there's a whole bunch of different ones. Um, one that you can use if you're like an outside salesperson is called Pipe Drive, where you can, you know, put the information of the client that you visited into with some notes and things like that. It's inexpensive and it's easy. I use a system called Infusionsoft um, with, you know, all my members and things like that. And it's much more extensive. It's not as easy to use, um, but I can tag them for people who showed up at my events and things like that. So there's just a whole bunch. And if you are wondering which one to use, just reach out to me. I'm happy to have a quick talk with you about it um, and give you some ideas if you don't have a CRM program so you can start to create a list of your customers and things like that, because that's a number, number one thing you have to do to be able to reach back out to people. There's old magazines or old reading materials sitting around, just get rid of them. Start over. A lot of times, you know, people that come in, I don't really have like an office office, but when I go into my accountant's office, I have magazines that people send me that I don't even subscribe to. I just cut off my address label and I just donate the magazines because I, I always feel kind of guilty about throwing magazines away. But if they're up to date magazines, I'm like, here, here's like four magazines that you can put and, you know, get rid of some of these ones from, you know, the year 2000. So once you make some of these small improvements and set up these systems, the hardest part is over and you will be like, I call it the purge, right? Once you do these things, you feel like lighter and so you can stand up straighter and <laughs> go from there. <laughs> because once you have a clean and organized office, it's so much easier to sustain 
everything in its place, but you just have to be patient. I know it doesn't happen overnight, so it might take a little while, but what better time of the year to do it than when we're gonna be starting into a new year, right? So maybe your goal between now and end of the year is to let me get the office organized, or maybe that's just going in and getting your computer. Like if you just do laptop stuff, just get your computer organized with your folders and everything properly um, situated. So that's what I got for you today. If anybody has any aha moments or anything that you've learned or that you use that you would like to share, I would love, love, love to have you um, open up your mic and come on and share that information. Um, and I'm gonna check the chat here and see if anybody has any questions. If you do, now's the time to throw it in the chat. Uh, and again, if you would like to come on and say this has worked for me in the past or this has not worked for me in the past, you know, feel free to do that at this time. As I said, my overall goal every week is to give you some content rich, straight to the point, um, instructional presentation that's going to enable you to get more leads, to attract more clients, and to make more money. That's what we're in business for, right? Um, and so that's, what I, that's why I'm doing this every single week. I, I will be on live every Wednesday from 11.30 to 12.30. I appreciate you being here. I would love, love, love for you to, um, you know, for you to invite other people. Um, uh, let's see, I have a question here from Marco. Becky, do we have to sign up every week in order to join this meeting? Marco, I have now kept it for the same login information. So no, you should not have to sign up every single week. Um, you should just get notified that I'm gonna go live. And what I'm gonna do this time, Marco, is um, I'm going to go ahead and create an event and hopefully put people in that way using um, a little bit of Zoom and a little bit of Facebook event planning. So I'm gonna try and do that and see if it makes it easier to notify people that have been on in the past, right? So, and Anne, you are so welcome. And Marianne asks, where do you find the online systems to help keep things organized online? Marianne, it's different for everybody. I don't have a great online system. Um, I would just go to Google and Google, uh, um, how do I organize my computer files? And there's like, oh, probably about 200,000 different articles with that. I, again, am a visual. I have everybody, so like Marianne, if you and I were doing business, I would make a folder that said uh, Marianne and your last name. And then anything that we talked about or communicated about, or maybe we did a you know a one-to-one -one Zoom meeting like this, I would record it. And then I would put that in your folder. So that's how I do it. I also like for the no BS meetings that I run in Pittsburgh, I have the whole year. And how I organize that, uh, Marianne, is I put um, 2018, okay, so I know the year, um, dash, like this month would be 12 for December, and then I put DEC, so 2018 dash 12 December, and then the date. So my meeting this month is on the 18th, and so that's how I do it, 2018-12, December 18. So I always know, like, and then dash what I'm talking about, right? So this one, this meeting that we're having is I think uh, business success habits to plan for the new year. And I would just put that in there. So I can look back at any time and know that in December, I presented business success habits um, and the date that I actually had the meeting and then when it flips to 2019, I start with 2019-01 Jan dash, and then the name of the meeting. So that's how I have found that that's how I keep best organized for things that are gonna go on every week or every month. It's exactly what I do with these meetings. I put the date, um, dash, whatever that weekly date is. So this week would be, you know, 2018-12, December 05, and what we talked about, optimizing office, right? So I can always go back and all the things that I create for this, like my social media posts, this PowerPoint, um, anything else like that is all in that one folder. So I can always go back and access it. So I do people by name, I do companies by name, and then all my stuff that I organize and teach is how I just told you. So hopefully that helps a little bit, but if you have further questions or if that 
doesn't seem like it might work for you, Marianne, I would just go on and Google it and um, see if you can find anything else that way. So let's see, another question. That is mainly on paper or on like, that is mainly online for me, Marianne. The, the on paper one that I talked to you about was the folders, right? It was the folders where um, I have the 12 months and then I have one through 31. So any day, like, I, like today's the fifth, I know if I have to follow up with you, Marianne, next week, I would put you into the 12th, right? And so then on the 12th, I open it up. I don't have to remember. I open it up and I go, oh, I have to follow up with Marianne today. So that's how I do all of that. And then I have those five additional folders um, that I talked about. If you, let's see here. I can run back to that. Do that. There it is. Yep, so the 12, the 12 folders, one for each month of the year, the 31 subfolders, one through 31, and then the five additional folders, which are to do, to review, waiting on a response, on hold, and to file. And then every um, few days, I, I check for like waiting for response. But I also have a tickler folder where I put on a note, I'm waiting on a, like if we had a meeting today, um, and then I wanted to have a response from you um, by Monday, I'd put a little tickler note in that says, check waiting on response for, uh, from Mary Ann. And so I know in my waiting on response that, you know, I know that I, would, I was supposed to hear back from you on Monday and I can follow up with you, okay? So that's how I do my paper. And then all my, um, all my online stuff is kind of how I um, just explained it to you. So hopefully that helps. Uh, let's see, paper folders I already use good. It's great to say I'm not alone. I'm with you. <laughs> paper is like my nemesis, right? I have so much stuff kind of everywhere until I got using um, that system. And I don't even know, even I don't even really have a name for it other than my paper system because everything is paper and I can at least find, you know, I had a situation when I had the restaurant where I couldn't find a really important contract that was signed um, because I hadn't filed it and the person that was supposed to help me file it, they didn't file it and it was a mess, right? And so the more you're in business for yourself and that you have to do all this stuff for yourself, if you don't have a helper or anybody, um, it's just easier in my opinion to create those systems because then you're not stressing, you're not spending a half a day looking for something, you know, that, that you didn't have. So organization is key and it's just you know, it's hard in the beginning, right? It's just like anything else until you get used to actually following some type of system. Um, and then once you do it a couple of times, it gets easier. So hopefully that helped. And I'm gonna go ahead and I will put this up on YouTube as well, just like I do everything else. Um, and again, I'm gonna keep that up for about 30 days and then I'm gonna take it down and put it into the vault. Um, so last week's training, which was business success habits and how to set smart goals, over on YouTube at this uh, web address. Next week, we're gonna talk about how to manage your time to make more money. And um, I'm kind of doing all of this in a procession because it's all gonna make sense to you in about another week or two. Because what I'm really trying to do is get you geared up so you have all the stuff organized and ready to go. So then we can jump into some of the fun stuff, which is like marketing your business and how to get more profits and um, make more sales in your business and things like that. But I wanna get all the uh, groundwork laid out first. So things we're gonna learn next week is why you should treat your time like money, how to calculate what your time is actually worth. And are you just you know, doing busy work or are you doing productive work? Um, that was a problem for me for a, for a long, long time. I was just, I had a to-do list and checking, 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 but I wasn't really getting anywhere until I started to make a success list and check from there. Um, the five biggest culprits of time theft, which happens all the time. And unless you're aware of them, you just fall into that trap where your time goes when you have an existing schedule that you're working from and different strategies that just allow you to take more control of your schedule. So that's what's coming up and I'm excited for that. Um, and if you want reminders, go ahead, just go to the bit.ly get more business now, um, sign up and you should get notified when we go live every Wednesday at 1130. If you don't, I'm working on it. Um, uh, but you were supposed to get that um, notification. And then if you haven't connected with me yet, please do. I'm on Facebook, LinkedIn. I'm kind of all over the place. If you um, are in Pittsburgh, I would love, love, love for you to come to a No BS Marketing meeting. 
Um, they are the last Tuesday of every month, except for December when we're going to have it on December 18th. And we go over a business building strategy or tactic every single month. Um, and I have such a great, great group of people right now. It's exciting and fun and very affordable to go to. And if you want more information like I'm giving you here, you can also check out the Nobia Success Academy. Um, and let me just check any more if there's any other questions before I wrap her up. All right, you are so welcome. I don't see any other questions, so um, I'll wait for another minute or two, but if there's no more questions, I will make that a wrap for the day. Um, as I say, I am here in Ohio having some girl time with um, other really, really smart marketers uh, that are out here, you know, actually doing it and getting business and uh, taking clients and things like that. So I am having a great, great time. But uh, thank you for jumping on. I appreciate you. Please come again next week. Invite your friends. My name is Becky Auer, and I hope you got a lot out of this training. All right, everybody. Have a good day.